the um, beginning of the or, or how this all came about was mm -hmm. really that uh, it, a couple of months ago I chatted to someone at the what was at the time called National Space Organization it's now mm. called TASA right yeah uh, the TASA um, so and, uh, who was working on the Leo project and and saying oh yeah we're we're going to spin off a company and I was like oh wow well, that's mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. and then I I was chatting to some um, uh, some. Um, well, potential investors, venture capital people oh. from from the U.S. who, who said they have been in talks with them mm -hmm. and then uh, mm -hmm. about taking a stake, or whatever. So it sounded pretty concrete. But then, looking at the whole thing further, I realized, well, maybe it's uh, it, it hasn't come that far. So mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. yeah, and, I'm, I'm talking to uh, still a few years. Yeah. Still a few years. Still okay. a few years. But yeah. but uh, they're they're working very hard to prepare. Right. The solar system. Yeah. Right. So. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to understand better maybe mm -hmm. um, how the uh, the national security side and the, the tech and, mm -hmm. and potential business side, how they fit together. So, sure. um, mm -hmm. so first of all, mm -hmm. how can uh, low Earth orbit communications play a role mm -hmm. in, in um, for Taiwan to develop resilient uh, communications infrastructure? <coughs> sure. Uh, so, as you said, uh, it's mostly a, a national security and NASIC, uh use, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We also have a separate uh, special allocation for commercial uses, uh, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but currently, uh, we uh, look at, for example, the uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine and how Starlink uh, right. has been used very successfully. Yeah. Uh, and so that's our primary uh, uh, concern, uh, which is facilitating uh, this societal resilience to make sure that, for example, journalists uh, can send videos uh, to international um, correspondent, international viewers, even during a large-scale disaster. Mm. Uh, that is our like number one scenario. And of course, it also includes, uh, for example, um, telephony uh, or video conferencing. Uh, think uh, Zelensky's daily addresses and things like that. And that is part of it too. Well, what about the um, because the examples you gave mm -hmm. now are all mm -hmm. uh, related to uh, mm, kind of communicating with mm -hmm. the outside world. But I yeah. mean, the one very important mm -hmm. thing, you, you need communications, for example, to have your mm -hmm. like, military run, right? And, and mm -hmm. to mm, the um, data flow and, and communications mm -hmm. like inside the country to, to help mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. function. Is that part of that? Yeah, the so, same? yeah. so it is true that uh, the main thing that international correspondents uh, ask me about is what, what do we do uh, if the submarine cables uh, are all broken or disrupted mm. and so on, which is the outside world communication part you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, and it's not hypothetical, right? Uh, during an earthquake, I think 2006, uh, there was a submarine cable uh, that's broken by, by earthquakes. Yeah. Uh, um, and so uh, that part is well served uh, by non-terrestrial mm. uh, networks. And internally, uh, we, what we've seen is, for example, in the Ukrainian situation, uh, mm. what they did is that they make sure that all the local telecoms are uh, roaming uh, with each other so that anyone can, uh, even if you're using um, the, the Taiwan uh, mm. then you will be able to tap into the Yuan Chen or Zhonghua Dianxi yeah. uh, networks. And that is a sort of heterogeneous uh, resilience too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's two two different things. Mm -hmm. um, and for the domestic communications, uh, we're working on, for example, working with the public cloud uh, vendors. Uh, I mean, Amazon and Google and uh, Microsoft Azure and yeah. so on, uh, so that all of them now have what we call local zones. Yeah. So that even if their applications are so called in the public cloud, uh, uh, we insist that for our, for example, Moda communication, uh, we actually work with all three public cloud vendors in addition to the national. Center of high speed computation. <clears throat> so, those public cloud uh, vendors agree that uh, they have those local zones that are physically within Taiwan, administered mm. um, only by, um, operated only by uh, people with Taiwanese nationality. Uh, and so, that even if uh, something, a large scale disaster happens, we can be sure uh, that we don't have to, you know, send our videos uh, to outside and back, uh, which would be very difficult actually. So, mm. that is the scenario that you mentioned, which is internal communication. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, I understand you are uh, running some kind of large scale. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know if it's an experiment. The, no, the it's kind of proof, proof of concept. concept uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so that mm -hmm. is um, is that 
particularly aimed at at um, Leo, or mm -hmm. is that well, what mm -hmm. exactly does that do? And sure. How does it do it? Sure. Uh, the POC is about uh, non-geostationary orbit satellite. Yeah. Uh, the uh, which includes, of course, both uh, LEO, but also uh, MEO, uh, mid Earth orbit uh, range, because it covers per satellite uh, a mm -hmm. higher range. Uh, and um, they have different characteristics, right? The MEO uh, doesn't offer uh, a very, very low latency. Uh, as as Leo does, mm. uh, but then uh, it it's more resilient uh, in a way because each satellite covers a wider range. Mm. So what we're uh, after is to experiment with different configurations, um, and the satellite receive us. Uh, we are also experimenting with both fixed receive us, but also uh, on the go receive us. Like it could be mounted on a on a firefighter's truck, uh, as the Shinju uh, City Fire Service already did with yeah. SES. Uh, yeah. That's that's uh, mid Earth orbit, right? So with the backhauls uh, in the MEO and the LEO range, then with the receivers, uh, both fixed and also mobile, mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, experiment with different configuration of those seven hundred uh, points, uh, as to ensure that uh, no matter where the disasters happen, uh, that place has sufficient balance with for outside communication. I see, okay. And um, this uh, proof of concept exercise, mm -hmm. uh, is that, um, does that also include like, if you operated such a system, mm -hmm. uh, like what it could produce outside of national security mm -hmm. or, or like resiliency purposes? Mm -hmm. Does it also look at, okay, what else can we Mm -hmm. get off of well, this. We, we talk about societal resilience as okay, well. Yes. Right. So, yeah. for example, um, journalism, uh, which is, I guess, technically a business, <laughs> but it's as important as command and control uh, mm. in times of emergency. Yeah. Uh, and so that is included. Mm. So what we're after is anything that helps societal resilience mm. during a large-scale disaster of an earthquake, uh, maybe natural or unnatural earthquakes, uh, that can help mm. the societal resilience. And that's the, the purview of this POC. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the... Mm, the POC, there's also, I guess, there's all, it mm -hmm. also involves um, companies like telecom operators or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever. I mean, I've asked some mm -hmm. of them, but they all said they, they sign mm -hmm. non-disclosure agreements, so they can't tell mm -hmm. me what, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I just wondered, like, for them, uh, if they take part in this, will they mm -hmm. arrive at some point at a, dis uh, at a, um, mm -hmm. a decision uh, if this gets set up? Mm -hmm. Like, what's the business case for mm -hmm, me? What, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. how do I make this operational as a company? Yeah, so uh, the investment in the next couple of years, uh, uh, I think 150 million pounds, um, is strictly just for societal resilience. Okay, uh, it's, yeah. it's not uh, trying to recover so-called uh, investment uh, through a subscription model or the yeah. things that you, you're implying. Uh, on the other hand, though, uh, we do have a commercial uh, satellite um, announcement that I think already two companies have applied. Uh, and I think mm. the business case here is to serve the population that are either uh, like very remote uh, on the high mountains yeah. or uh, like far away uh, islands or uh, that uh, are on the move. Because if you are on the move, uh, it's less likely for the existing 4G or 5G uh, telecom network to serve you very well, yeah. unless you move on a very predictable pattern like the high-speed rails, right? Uh, and so um, in these kinds of uses, including boats and so on, and aircrafts, uh, I think uh, satellites are also uh, finding an audience. So the local commercial um, uh, satellite telecom providers, uh, two of them already uh, sent applications and we're right. reviewing the applications. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, um, so if um, if this gets realized at some point, mm -hmm. um, you you still have would that be a, a kind of setup like Starlink, or mm -hmm. would it be something completely different? I mean, mm -hmm. um, what do you mean? By well, like uh, because uh, Starlink, they they have a uh, first of all, they they use certain hardware mm -hmm. and um, they have a quite long supply chain, mm -hmm. part of which is also Taiwanese, so yes. quite a large part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but so they're, they're kind of, the way they do things is they um, they offer this as a service, right? And But you could have different business models. You could maybe some some companies in that field or some startups, they, mm -hmm. they focus on only 
offering uh, a certain part of the hardware or mm. some uh, focus on only offering uh, I don't know some some payload or, or whatever so I, mm -hmm. I just wonder mm -hmm. like what what the mm, the vision or the expectation is what what the eventual outcome would mm. be and and then mm -hmm. like who would play the other roles in that in yeah. that ecosystem that's a great question um, so in addition to the national security and societal resilience, what mm. you're now asking uh, is whether there will be a kind of plurality of business models uh, mm. that uh, people can experiment with different uh, parts of the stack, right? So that yeah. the, the local uh, supply chain uh, may enter not just as a uh, kind of supply chain to Starlink, but also uh, maybe on 5G ORAN and things like that yeah. in many different segments uh, of the, the market. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, first of all, uh, because MODA is also in charge, our ministry is also in charge of, uh, I think in English it's called Universal Service, Universal uh, Service Fund. Um, that is to say, people anywhere in Taiwan, even though uh, the population density is very low, uh, they still need uh, to have access to basic uh, telecommunication services, mm. right? Um, and, and we're uh, now, for this year, reviewing uh, the setup of this fund, which previously only had um, fixed fiber optic uh, lines to those underserved areas, which yeah. uh, is, frankly speaking, uh, reaching a, a kind of diminishing return uh, point, yeah. right? Because um, the, the places that could be served in such a uh, way in a cost-effective manner has all been served. Taiwan has a very high broadband penetration mm. rate. And so for the places that had not been served this way, um, I think uh, Universal Service needs to then work with non-terrestrial uh, backbones, mm. uh, which is not currently done, uh, mostly because when the <clears throat> regulations and uh, um, the, the plans were, were the policies were created, there was no uh, feasible commercial solution right. uh, for this kind of NTNs. So <clears throat> this year, we're putting in um, some uh, reconfiguration, let's call it that, uh, to the universal services so that we can meaningfully include the alternate providers, as we've mentioned, yeah. uh, into the universal uh, access service. I think the research uh, and uh, reconfiguration will proceed with a multi-stakeholder fashion, uh, mm -hmm. and so like not NDAs. So you might be able to, to get more information about that. Uh, actually, the general plan is already in our ministerial uh, monthly meetings, uh, the presentation uh, and so on, and I can uh, ask my colleague to, to send you, I think it was the last month's Wu uh, Hui Ministerial uh, oh, okay. uh, yeah. meeting where the Universal Service Fund uh, reconfiguration presentation was included as part of the meeting transcript. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, now, if Taiwan at some, at some mm. point in a few years uh, gets its own, um, well, non-terrestrial network, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm whole uh, ecosystem yeah. or, or service um i mean my technical understanding of the whole thing is limited mm -hmm. and i struggle a bit but my my basic understanding mm -hmm. is if you put up this thing it coverage is automatically mm -hmm. i mean it's not it's not mm -hmm. um limited to taiwan so mm -hmm. uh, right so so it could due to the nature of how how these satellites work mm -hmm. uh, coverage could theoretically be um, the other parts, other right? parts uh, as right. well. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. if you want to kind of run this, especially as a business, you mm -hmm. theoretically you you compete with uh, others that also offer global or regional mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. service. Um, is that? I mean, w would that be something that um, we just forget about and we only focus on on uh, um, meeting Taiwan's needs, mm -hmm. or, or uh, what? What do you do with this mm. this kind of? Uh, with this asset or with the, those resources? <clears throat> yeah, I'll use one very concrete example. Oh. Um, so uh, the Xinzhu uh, fire service case uh, that I just mentioned had the European SES Global uh, as the backhaul provider. That's yes. a mid as orbit yeah. uh, vendor. Uh, but locally, uh, they work with, I think, Pegatron and Wave N and so on, which are all local yeah. uh, providers. And Pegatron, for example, uh, miniaturizes the 5G uh, tower, the core network and everything uh, into, I think, a backpack and certainly a luggage, right? So it, it's so small that you don't need uh, to install it anywhere. Uh, you just 
put it uh, in a truck and then uh, drive somewhere that has fire or needs an emergency communication oh. service and then you set it up and just as you said as long as you can look at a sky then it serves as a uh, functional backbone right. and that technology the 5g core network the miniaturization and so on uh, is portable uh, in the sense that it can also serve other places mm. uh, needs that's not taiwan it doesn't need to uh, work only with ses global right it can work with any other meo or leo uh, provider it's just switching a, a different backhaul chip right so um from, from pegatron's uh, point of view uh, it's uh, portable in a sense that it doesn't need to work uh, with any particular telecom or any particular MEO or LEO. It's reusable, so you can like multiply. Right, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so I think that's that's the vision. It's not to uh, tie ourselves to any particular uh, satellite provider which has national security risks. Right? <laughs> we want to right. work with as many of them as possible concurrently. Yeah, that's the, that's resilience. Yeah. Mm, that's resilience. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a bit, little bit about uh, standards? I mean, um, mm -hmm. so, so their uh, 3GPP released mm -hmm. this NTN uh, uh, standards mm -hmm. um, in the summer a few few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean for for all these developments? And mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. I I mean I talked to an investor who said actually mm -hmm. uh, another you you don't need new standards and and um, you could even imagine that. Um, uh, these services in the future run on something mm -hmm. uh, on on existing standards and, and mm -hmm. um, on, on a kind of something developed out of a of an existing operating mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what this changes with. Um, yeah, um, I think mostly is to make the portable uh, solutions um, like even more easily accessible to that of the international audience, right? So the idea is that <coughs> LEOs are useful for agriculture, environmental, logistics, transportation, and so on. And these are uh, universal needs. Uh, it's not just Taiwanese people that, that need, uh, you know, low energy consumption and fast deployment uh, mm. for those use cases. And so uh, with international standards and best practices and so on, it makes it easier for us to uh, have proof of concept here uh, and uh, then find a market in other jurisdictions. And um, frankly speaking, uh, Taiwan, as I mentioned, because of of our um, ge geography, uh, the existing uh, fixed line and mobile network already covers a vast majority uh, of our population. Mm. So uh, the commercial operation need to find an international uh, audience anyway uh, in order to grow their businesses. Yeah. 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 Okay. So with this, um, with these different um, players involved, mm -hmm. like telecom companies, but also like hardware, mm -hmm. uh, hardware vendors, and, yeah. and well, and the state, of course. So. Mm -hmm. um, um what would be the um what would be the role of this future spin off mm -hmm. of, of uh tasa i mean what mm -hmm. would they what kind of company would they be what i i don't really mm -hmm understand exactly what, what the role would be. Yeah, I think that's a that's a Tasa question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so yeah, I think the Taiwan Space Agency uh, <clears throat> we're we're involved uh, in as much as uh, we focus on the scenarios that could be deployed within the next few years. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, like four years or more in the future, mm. uh, that's the uh, National Science and Technology uh, Council, that's oh, the okay. NSTC. Yes. So we have this like time horizon uh, responsibility areas, <laughs> right? right? So we're, we're aware uh, of TASA and yeah. uh, aware of the mid to long term uh, evolution, uh, but uh, we're focusing on what is technically possible uh, within the next couple of years. Okay, so so what they're doing is kind of separate, and it's it's more um, yeah. So so to to uh, make the POCs work, uh, this is a two way thing, right? Yeah. Uh, if we figure out the POCs uh, like shortcomings with existing technology, mm. uh, that feeds into TASA's uh, direction. I see. Yeah. And, and TASA uh, shares the possibilities uh, with us, but fundamentally, it's different entities. Mm. Yeah. Okay, understood. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, um, what about uh, what about domestic regulation? Mm -hmm, Do you mm -hmm. need a lot of changes in uh, mm -hmm. laws, regulations, whatever, to to mm -hmm. help this um, mm -hmm. industry and and uh, this? Yeah, for whole uh, yeah, space we, we already have, <coughs> like for example, for. 
dedicated telecommunication network for research and development purposes. Uh, there is already a administrative regulation, uh, sometimes referred to as sandbox, mm. uh, for, for such uh, research and development uh, networks. So private companies can already apply to set up uh, those technical or commercial networks to, to test uh, those cutting edge technology to fast track uh, their feasibility assessment. So that is uh, already in place. Uh, and if, for example, they want to work with um, uh, so-called uh, self-driving vehicles um, in land or sea or, or air, uh, mm. there's also a so-called sandbox uh, application. Mm. Uh, I think it's in law uh, for it and so on. So uh, for the past few years, we've already had uh, the regulatory changes uh, approved by the parliament in order to make something like this happen. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, Taiwan's efforts in, in this um, mm -hmm. space, they, they're not um, separate from the rest mm -hmm. of the world. And I'm, yeah. I'm just wondering mm -hmm. um, if um, you have any plans or any ideas mm -hmm. how uh, these resilient communications uh, efforts could, um, where they could sit in, in connection with some, mm -hmm. well, uh, partners or friends or neighbors, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there's a lot going on with regard to space as mm -hmm. well in Japan, in Korea, and mm -hmm. they're close mm -hmm. and they're also kind of allies and friends. And, and yeah, yeah, they, is are, there any, they are friends. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so I, mm -hmm. I don't know if, if you're thinking about any potential uh, link up or, mm -hmm. or um, mm -hmm. partnership or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure that will unfold uh, over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing now is just to make sure that our POCs reflect uh, our societal resilience and national security needs. Uh, we need to get this part uh, done before uh, we can um, so-called export right? uh, or to share uh, our, our solutions. Uh, but already I believe uh, that in our commercial applications there are already um, international partnerships. Uh, so I think the two applicants, uh, I think one working with Euro, Euro Telsat, uh, when we're working with OneWeb, I think they're going to merge anyway. Uh, I'm not 100% sure uh, when mm. that happens. Uh, so the European uh, and SES Global, of course, already work with the fire service in Xinzhou. Yeah. Uh, so there are already uh, a lot of interest uh, because they all understand that in our um, 700 points satellite receivers, uh, we're not saying that all those 700 must work with only one vendor mm. uh, in any part of the stack. In, in particular, uh, we want to um, work with multiple, like at least one LEO and one MEO, uh, so that we can test the different configurations uh, to make sure that uh, each need is served uh, by the best of breed or better uh, solutions uh, that are available. So to that end, uh, we get a lot of interest from even smaller players yeah. uh, that says that, okay, maybe we cannot satisfy all 700 uh, receiver size, but for some particular use cases, uh, they think they're very well suited for that particular particular use case and we're all open to work oh, okay. with those international yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. um, now, mm, what I found really fascinating mm -hmm. is that uh, at the moment, the, the global market mm -hmm. for, for low earth orbit communications, mm -hmm. uh, there's really only one company or maybe, maybe two that, that, mm -hmm. uh, that offer that as a service, but uh, it looks like that might be about to change because you've got all these, like, I don't know how many startups worldwide that are working on. That is true. Uh, and if you include MEO, there's even more choices. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, they, uh -huh. there's, I think, one VC company that tracks them on. They, they have like 40 mm -hmm. something, but I think it's mm -hmm. probably at least mm -hmm. double that. Right. That, that's what I kind of were impl I was implying yeah. by with those smaller uh, players. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, if, Taiwan gets into that game. Um, how can you um, like what, what could the the corporate setup of that be? Mm -hmm. Do do you think we we need some kind of um, founder personality? On I don't mm -hmm. know because I'm part of it is government driven, right? Mm -hmm. And and um, mm -hmm. government obviously is great because you, you give funding and you need the regulatory framework mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, well, government is not really a founder or mm -hmm. doesn't really have a great track record. I don't know, we're like a startup here, but <laughs> <laughs> we're a new ministry. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. no, no, okay, mm -hmm. but like when I was talking to the TASA guys, they said, mm -hmm. oh, we, we can do like 
But the same thing that Itri did with mm-hmm. uh, with the uh, chip foundries uh, tens of years ago, and we can we mm-hmm. can pull the TSMC or UMC uh, mm-hmm. model again. But and, uh, a new mountain, that guards talent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. But I'm not sure this is the same mm-hmm. thing. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not. So I, I'm I'm just wondering uh, mm-hmm. if anybody is is spending any uh, time and thought on that, or, or yeah, whether... I'm sure the the NSTC uh, is thinking about that. I think the upcoming uh, national white paper on science and technology, uh, which will be published anytime now, uh, talks also about uh, these horizons. I think because it's aimed at 2035. Uh, it, it has uh, a, a picture, uh, a roadmap of sorts. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah. so I would encourage you to look into that. Um, right. Yeah. It, it's not satellite specific. It's more no, like it's what, what kind of right, what, what kind of picture where it wants to uh, work with the international science and technology community for Taiwan's needs in 2035. Mm. Uh, I think it's going to be published soon. So, so that's kind of our our vision uh, document. Yeah. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, in Moda, uh, what we're looking for is just a uh, uh, kind of immediately useful uh, solutions in the next yeah. couple of years. Okay. Yeah. So so the um, the proof of concept exercise mm-hmm. when's mm-hmm. that going to be um, mm-hmm. f- like when's that going to be finished or, or completed? Yeah, so or we asked for a budget for uh, this year and next year. Yeah. Right. So uh, and this year uh, we'll have uh, like initial configurations, uh, which may change uh, depending on how the POC uh, tests conduct. And mm. if we decide uh, we need more uh, budget, uh, then we ask for the parliament for more budget. Uh, if the POC right. is successful, it's quite likely uh, that it will uh, expand to more uh, sustainable uh, models that uh, in, instead of just uh, a few satellites receive us here, a few satellites receive us there, we will likely work with the commercial providers uh, that by that time will probably already get the license uh, to operate those spectrums uh, right. so that they can serve uh, like non-national security, societal resilience, um, maybe the industrial needs uh, mm. because large businesses will also want uh, to uh, kind of continue uh, international connection if something like a large sale that yeah. happens uh, but they're not currently covered by the POC uh, needs mm. uh, but they would also want to integrate uh, with the uh, emergency response network that we are setting up this year and next year. Yeah. Uh, but then they will have to then work with uh, commercial providers. Uh, and so we we think uh, that if the POCs are anywhere near uh, successful, uh, it will promote a, a kind of new ecosystem uh, that ensures that this kind of uh, infrastructure is used, as I mentioned, on agriculture, logistics, and things right. like that. Right, yeah. okay. Um, but in the end, uh, you still have to, um, or, or Taiwan's government still has to decide or make up their mind if um, Taiwan really needs its own uh, mm-hmm. provider to mm-hmm. be really safe. I mean, you mm-hmm. you describe how, of course, um, the, at the moment the focus is on on um, mm-hmm. being. Uh, flexible and being able to to work with as many different providers yeah, like as possible. Like the three public cloud providers, yeah. right? Because in a uh, large disaster, even if it's a human-made disaster, yeah. it's very very costly for the attacker if they have to take down all three public cloud providers yeah. at once. It's almost unimaginable. Right? Mm. Uh, uh, but uh, of course, that doesn't mean that we don't work, for example, with our own uh, National Center for High Speed Computation and things like that as the another uh, cloud provider. Uh, and this is not just because uh, it's domestic, <laughs> it's also because it feeds into, as I mentioned, the research agenda, uh, because yeah. the local needs drive uh, the research agenda to uh, figure out solutions that caters uh, to the particular use cases. And mm. then the, uh, it also makes us easier to talk with the public clouds because they would, then we have a local uh, solution that already addresses yeah. uh, some of those needs. And so it's a win for everyone. But even if NCHC, for example, uh, satisfies our public cloud computation needs, it's still a good thing that we work with all those three public clouds uh, just to increase resilience. So having yeah. a local domestic stack doesn't decimate uh, the use of the public clouds and the international providers. Yeah, but um, if we talk about low Earth orbit mm-hmm. uh, satellite com- communications, mm-hmm. it's also about like um, whose satellite mm-hmm. constellation you're using. Right? As many as possible. 
Uh, right. But yeah. um, <coughs> so, uh, do you think um, mm. does Taiwan need uh, mm -hmm. its own like uh, mm, mm -hmm. its own launch satellite constellation mm -hmm. to just in case? Yeah, or? So, right. So as I mentioned, the more the better. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so so yeah. it's exactly like the National uh, Center for High Speed Computation. Yeah. Right. So if the NCHC satisfies all our public cloud uh, computation needs, mm. uh, of course it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, it doesn't stop us from working with the local zones of the public world. Right. Okay. Mm. I mean, if um, if we look at the um, Ukraine war, mm -hmm. um, are there any particular uh, things in this area that Taiwan is is learning mm -hmm. from that other mm -hmm. than well yeah this worked so mm -hmm. we, we, we need to look at it but um, mm, like many providers are better than one <laughs> <laughs> right yeah you, you yeah. can quote them out right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah um, but mm, I mean at the moment we have a situation mm -hmm. globally where uh, mm, there is um, there are not that many. I mean, in terms mm -hmm. of, of satellite constellations and launching, mm -hmm. you, you have a the line is very long, and and you have to wait, and there's there's very limited options for. Um, I'm aware of that. Yeah. So so how <clears throat> how how long <clears throat> do you think it's going to take until that mm -hmm. situation fundamentally changes? I think that's a Tassa question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a Tassa question. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not not just a Taiwan uh, mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan thing though. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's global international uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, um, it, mm -hmm. mm, I know that you're not um, you can't comment on on like uh, mm -hmm. uh, the particular nature of um, well, if any uh, technology is new mm -hmm. or me too or whatever. But yeah, um, the the e tree and Tasa questions are, yes. are better answered by e tree. Um, but mm, more more broadly, mm -hmm. um, how does the fact that uh, Taiwanese companies are so strong and present mm -hmm. throughout that whole supply chain, mm -hmm. how does that impact uh, your work in this area? I mean, how does it mm -hmm. help, or um, and and uh, does it contribute uh, help in any particular areas mm -hmm. of of the? Yeah, it makes it makes, <coughs> it makes um, tailor made solutions easier to arrange. Uh, I'll okay. give you one example. Mm. Um, so, uh, a few weeks ago uh, on the Moda Facebook uh, and press release, uh, we posted uh, how in a uh, remote area um, <clears throat> uh, there's ultrasound um, diagnostics uh, that are operated by robotic arms that are telecontrolled by the McKay uh, Hospital's uh, doctors uh, who uh, enjoy this low latency of 5G uh, mm. communication, right? Uh, and it's a, it's a pretty good example because it's not the kind of, you know, doing surgery on ambulance car uh, that requires an absolutely uh, stable uh, connection. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, existing 4G connections also wouldn't work because uh, to do ultrasound in real time to get feedback and so on, you really need very low latency. Yeah. <clears throat> And so this and on those rural areas, they already have a uh, kind of touring uh, truck uh, that <coughs> carries the medical equipment anyway. Uh, and so it's not new infrastructure. It's mostly adding 5G uh, and telediagnostics to existing uh, infrastructure that are already covered by the Ministry of Health and right. Welfare. Yeah. Uh, and uh, every part of that stack, from the robotic arm to the uh, 5G ORAN and everything, is Taiwanese uh, company. Uh, and so that makes it easier for us uh, to work in very short iterations, meaning that <coughs> we, we try it once, and if it doesn't work, we can change the configuration very quickly, like yeah. literally in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, and if any part of the stack uh, is uh, like owned by international uh, friends who may or may not consider uh, this rapid iteration the top priority, uh, mm -hmm. then it uh, means that we can only iterate every quarter or even every year, depending on how the contract is worded. Uh, and so I think a, a, a advantage of the Taiwanese presence on all part of the stack is that on um, novel use cases like this, uh, we can afford uh, to work very closely with the societal needs so that if the societal response is not perfect, we can very quickly adapt so that uh, it fits the local needs and that increase people's uh, trust uh, with this kind of technology. Right. Yeah. Um, do, do you see any, um, <clears throat> like what's the need for mm -hmm. uh, developing uh, 
talent or human resources, like engineering talent in, mm-hmm. in this area, because it's it's very clearly something where, where there's going to be immense uh, growth mm-hmm. and expansion and need for, for more. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Do, do you see any shortfalls in any uh, mm-hmm. area where... Um, where maybe Taiwan needs to attract more people or develop more more talent mm-hmm. or whatever. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so um, we have this concept of talent circulation. So Taiwanese people uh, like me who <laughs> work in Silicon Valley for, for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, so last year, uh, the, the year back, um, 2021, uh, a lot of my Silicon Valley friends are physically here. In yeah, Taiwan. I remember. Yeah, thanks to the gold card. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they learned that we hand out those residency permits uh, even for people who've never been to Taiwan. Mm. So like the Estonian e-residency, but actually you can also uh, come here and enjoy um, universal health care. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say uh, is that uh, we, we don't see this as a zero-sum thing where the, the talents go other places. Yeah. Uh, because at some point, when they realize that the uh, local ecosystem is good for any particular application of the technology that they're developing, uh, they tend to bring more people back. Uh, and maybe not permanently back, maybe mm. just for the extent of that project. Yeah. Uh, but there's a Taiwanese network um, in Silicon Valley and in other uh, high-tech places. Uh, and so uh, we're now working with the Gold Card Office uh, in the National Development Council uh, to um, figure out whether we can have a, a digital, um, maybe not nomad, maybe just call it digital gold card area, uh, in which that we hand out gold cards uh, not to uh, like people who have won any particular prize, but people who can work anywhere anyway. Uh, and whose work uh, feeds into uh, the kind of digital resilience needs uh, that we have. Uh, and so the, the goal is for them to get a gold card, uh, but not maybe spending all their time in Taiwan, uh, but rather just build a kind of support uh, ecosystem. And they can be anywhere um, in Taiwan anyway to, to share whatever they have learned and work with the local ecosystem without getting tied into any particular employer. And that's why the gold card is designed. That, uh, yeah, that, that yeah. seems very, very... Uh, um, in in step with reality, mm-hmm. actually, yes, what, yeah, what yeah. many of these people exactly. want and need. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them are in Yilan because of surfing. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Okay, <laughs> for all the rain. I, mean, it was... <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, but but I mean, uh, whether they're in for for surfing or hiking yeah. or food or things yeah. like that, they are natural cluster, and because they are digital nomads, it doesn't really matter uh, where they work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I I have just one. Uh, a uh, final mm-hmm. question, which is really a follow-up to, to make sure I understand mm-hmm. you yeah, sure, uh, correctly. Sure. So you were talking about earlier about uh, mm, mm, working with different cloud providers mm-hmm. and it would be very difficult for a for an attacker to take down uh, all, all the big ones. Like, right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so if we're talking... But, but those are still... Uh, um, the main ones are still global companies, right? They but they, they, mm-hmm. they just have... Um, the the local localized zone, local zones, local zones, so those, those right? Speak, so, yeah. so technically, when mm. we're talking about an attacker taking those down, aimed at Taiwan, what, what would that mean? Would would that be aimed at uh, like physically yeah, disrupting like, their infrastructure? Oh, okay. uh, or through yeah. cyber attacks, um, like take take down the the software network. Uh, so either is possible. Uh, but for an attacker to disrupt or to destroy all the three public cloud providers, oh. all the data centers, and so on, it's actually quite difficult. To, uh, in order to, mm-hmm. to for an attacker to make sure that uh, Taiwan mm-hmm. can no longer use their services, mm-hmm. would, would that need yeah. would that need to actually yeah. uh, they, they will disrupt have to do them globally? Two, two things, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, they will need to first uh, because they all have local zones, oh. so they have to disrupt the communication. Uh, from their data center uh, in uh, Zhanghua or in Banqiao uh, to our local domestic telecom networks. So they'll have to to cut that uh, and all three of them. Uh, uh, But even if it's done, it's not enough uh, because as I mentioned, we have submarine cables that connects to their uh, data centers other places in the world. So they will also have to disrupt the submarine cables. Uh, But then, uh, even if both of them are done, uh, then we still have the backhaul uh, that is non-terrestrial. 
Uh, so they will also have to take down their non-terrestrial uh, yeah. networks because that also connects uh, to their public data centers, right? So uh, they will have to cut communication lines on uh, the local zone data center uh, and the submarine cables and the satellite backhaul. But wait, wait, so the satellite backhaul, that's something that exists already or this is mm -hmm. something that we're it's, building it, now? It exists already uh, in limited bandwidth. Right. Right, so like SES Global, uh, and oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it already exists, the yeah. fire service in Shinju already use it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what we're doing is that we're expanding the bandwidth yeah. by working with more providers. Yeah. And we're also making sure that we can work with more than one uh, cloud providers. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's that's a lot clearer and that's, mm. it makes it yeah physically clear. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, on, on this topic, that's really uh, all I wanted to uh, ask you. Thanks so much. That yeah, was excellent. really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. No, I hope Tasa will at some point mm -hmm. uh, be willing to, to talk to me officially because uh -huh. they, they need, if you ask for an interview, they, they need um, about six weeks to even get an answer if it will be possible or not. Really? So, yeah, uh, it's, okay. a, it's a bit sad about mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Mm -hmm. And um, did I say Happy New Year? I did. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. <laughs>